Welcome back to Stocks and Trades channel. We provide easy to digest information in short videos about stock market investing, personal finance, money saving, and building wealth. Our content is designed to help you achieve financial freedom sooner. Today's video will provide news, insight, and investment suggestions on the week ahead. We'll analyze two plus one stocks to watch this week and some others to that will be volatile. So, let's begin. Disclaimer. All trading involves risk. Only risk capital you are prepared to lose. Past performance is not an indication of future results. This content is for educational or entertainment purposes only and is not investment advice. The major US indexes gave back some of the gains they recorded in March, as stocks pulled back after a strong start to the week. On a total return basis, the S&P 500 fell about 1.3%, the Dow slipped 0.3%, and the NASDAQ dropped 3.9%. The NASDAQ extended its run of year to date in a performance relative to the other major US indexes, as it fell by nearly 4% for the week. With its heavy weighting in technology stocks, the NASDAQ has recently come under pressure in an environment of rising interest rates. Relative to recent quarters, expectations are low heading into earnings season, which opens this week as major banks begin reporting first quarter results. As of Friday, Analysts were expecting companies in the S&P 500 to post earnings increases averaging 4.5% compared with the same period a year earlier. If the growth rate ends up close to that figure, it would mark the first time in two years that quarterly earnings growth fell short of 10%. Our first stock type is dividend earning stocks. These are a great way to earn passive income. This week's suggestion is Petrobras, with ticker symbol PBR. Petroleo Brasileiro S.A., better known by the acronym Petrobras, is a state-owned Brazilian multinational corporation in the petroleum industry. The company was ranked 120th in the most recent Fortune Global 500 list. In the 2020 Forbes Global 2000, Petrobras was ranked as the 70th largest public company in the world. The company operates through exploration and production, refining, transportation and marketing, gas and power, and corporate and other businesses segments. It engages in prospecting, drilling, refining, processing, trading, and transporting crude oil from producing onshore and offshore oil fields, and shale or other rocks, as well as oil products, natural gas, and other liquid hydrocarbons. The exploration and production segment explores, develops, and produces crude oil, natural gas liquids, and natural gas primarily for supplies to the domestic refineries. The refining, transportation and marketing segment engages in the refining, logistics, transport, marketing, and trading of crude oil and oil products, exportation of ethanol, and extraction and processing of shale, as well as holding interests in petrochemical companies. The gas and power segment is involved in the logistic and trading of natural gas and electricity, transportation and trading of LNG, generation of electricity through thermoelectric power plants, holding interests in transportation and distribution of natural gas, and fertilizer production and natural gas processing business. The corporate and other businesses segment produces biodiesel and its co-products, and ethanol, and distributes oil products. The company was founded in 1953 and is headquartered in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Joaquim Silva e Luna has been the chief executive officer of Petrobras since April 2021. Some technical analysis data shows that Petrobras' return on equity is 30.9%, its average volume is about 35.7 million. Its market cap is $102.33 billion, its beta is 1.32, its P-E ratio is 4.53, its PEG ratio is 0.58, and its EPS is $3.47. Despite our rating as 7, we consider this stock as a moderate buy. Based on experienced analysts offering 12-month price targets for Petrobras in the last three months, the average price target is $16.75, with a high estimate of $17 and a low estimate of $16.50. With current price at $15.69, this would mean almost 6.8% average profit over the next year. Petrobras pays an annual dividend of $2.63, which amounts to a dividend yield of 16.75%. The ex-dividend date is the 14th of April, so buying a Petrobras stock by then, will pay you $1.217 on 23rd May. 
the above analysis is not exhaustive and just presents you some important insights. We suggest using this analysis and carry out your own detailed research before taking a decision to open any position. Our second stock type is growth stocks. A growth stock is a share in a business that's shown above average earnings and has the potential to grow faster than the overall economy. This week's suggestion is Etsy, with ticker symbol Etsy. Etsy Incorporated operates two-sided online marketplaces that connect buyers and sellers primarily in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Australia, France, and India. Its primary marketplace is Etsy.com that connects artisans and entrepreneurs with various consumers. The company also offers Reverb, a musical instrument marketplace, Depop, a fashion resale marketplace, and Elo7, a Brazil-based marketplace for handmade and unique items. In addition, it offers various seller services, including Etsy Payments, a payment processing service, Etsy Ads, an advertising platform, and shipping labels, which allows sellers in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and India to purchase discounted shipping labels. Further, the company provides various seller tools, including Shop Manager Dashboard, a centralized hub for Etsy sellers to track orders, manage inventory, view metrics and statistics, and have conversations with their customers, and sell on Etsy, an application to enable enhanced onboarding and video uploading. Additionally, it offers Etsy seller analytics pages that provides insights regarding traffic acquisition for their shops, targeted offers, a sales and promotions tool, and social media tool, and accounting and bookkeeping services. The company also provides educational resources comprising blog posts, video tutorials, Etsy seller handbook, Etsy.com online forums, and insights, Etsy Teams, a platform to build personal relationships with other Etsy sellers, and a star seller program. It connects a total of 7.5 million active sellers to 96.3 million active buyers, and has 120 million items for sale. The company was founded in 2005 and is headquartered in Brooklyn, New York. Josh Silverman is the Chief Executive Officer, President and Director of Etsy since May 2017. Some technical analysis data shows that Etsy's return on equity is 9.3%, its average volume is about 7.64 million, its market cap is $16.99 billion, its beta is 1.87, its P.E. ratio is 73.43, its EPS is $1.71 and its asset growth is 79.79%. Despite our rating as 5, we consider this stock as a moderate buy. Based on experienced analysts offering 12-month price targets for Etsy in the last three months, the average price target is $201.36, with a high estimate of $280 and a low estimate of $140. With current price at $116.58, this would mean about 72.7% average profit over the next year. While many retailers are struggling with limited supply and inflationary costs, Etsy is largely immune to these headwinds. Etsy relies on a growing number of active sellers to list merchandise and generate sales. Etsy makes money by charging a transaction fee on each sale, currently 6.5%. It's constantly looking for ways to improve the shopping experience. Management has focused on things like delivering smarter search results and introducing ways for sellers to engage with their customers through videos. Etsy's performance in 2021 suggests its efforts have worked to drive more engagement from existing buyers. In 2021, Etsy grew gross merchandise sales by nearly 30% over 2020. The company reported that 53% of all active buyers were repeat buyers in 2021. While the stock might be volatile in the near term, Etsy isn't going anywhere, as Silverman noted. E-commerce is a wide-open opportunity, and Etsy has an advantage with its focus on specialty merchandise. If Etsy can generate just half of the 39% annualized earnings growth analysts are currently projecting, the stock could double by 2027. The above analysis is not exhaustive and just presents you some important insights. We suggest using this analysis and carry out your own detailed research before taking a decision to open any position. Our third stock type is blue chip stocks. These are typically large, well-established and financially sound companies that have operated for many years and that have dependable earnings, often paying dividends to investors. This week's suggestion is Starbucks, with ticker symbol S-Bucks. Starbucks Corporation, together with its subsidiaries, operates as a roaster, marketer, and retailer of specialty coffee worldwide. The company operates through three segments, North America, International, and Channel Development. Its stores offer coffee and tea beverages, roasted whole beans and ground coffees, single-serve products, and ready-to-drink beverages, and various food products, 
such as pastries, breakfast sandwiches, and lunch items. The company also licenses its trademarks through licensed stores, and grocery and food service accounts. The company offers its products under the Starbucks, Tivana, Seattle's Best Coffee, Evolution Fresh, Ethos, Starbucks Reserve, and Princhy Brands. It operates 16,826 company-operated and licensed stores in North America, and 17,007 company-operated and licensed stores internationally. The company was founded in 1971 and is headquartered in Seattle, Washington. Howard Schultz is currently the Interim Chief Executive Officer of Starbucks. Some technical analysis data shows that Starbucks' return on equity is minus 62.2%, its average volume is about 10.54 million, its market cap is $93.77 billion, its beta is 0.9, its P-E ratio is 22.03, its PEG ratio is 2.3, its EPS is $3.70, and its return on capital is 16.7%. Despite our rating as 5, we consider this stock as a moderate buy. Based on experienced analysts offering 12-month price targets for Starbucks in the last three months, the average price target is $112.95, with a high estimate of $135 and a low estimate of $91. With current price at $81.52, this implies a 38.55% upside potential over the next year. The above analysis is not exhaustive and just presents you some important insights. We suggest using this analysis and carry out your own detailed research before taking a decision to open any position. Next week, many companies are going to release their earnings reports which is one of the most potentially volatile times of the year for equities, and if we are not careful enough, we could put our entire portfolio at risk. Companies may announce earnings or losses and stock prices may go up or down significantly. For this reason, we suggest that you avoid or carefully consider opening a position for the following stocks during next week, and wait to evaluate the earnings announcement before deciding to invest. Mind Technology will release earnings on Monday 11th April. Albertsons Companies, CarMax, Evotech, and Washington Federal will release earnings on Tuesday 12th April. Wednesday 13th April will be the most popular day of the week as Shaw Communications, J.P. Morgan Chase, BlackRock, Infosys, Fastenal, and Delta Air Lines among others will release their earnings on this day. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, United Health Group, Morgan Stanley, and U.S. Bancorp will release earnings on Thursday 14th April. Finally, no companies will release earnings on Friday 15th April as all U.S. financial markets observe Good Friday. Watch these stocks' prices carefully and think twice before making any decision. Next week will not be that popular among dividend stocks, but we have some interesting options to suggest. Monday 11th April is the ex-dividend date for MSC Industrial Direct Company. Tuesday 12th April is the ex-dividend date for American Tower, Inter Digital, Cadent, and Winnebago Industries. Wednesday 13th April will be the most popular day of the week and is the ex-dividend date for AbVi, Accenture, WD40 Company, AOG Resources, and Foot Locker. Thursday 14th April is the ex-dividend date for MV Oil Trust, Acuity Brands, and Alamo Group. As mentioned before, on Friday 15th April all U.S. financial markets observe Good Friday and no company has assigned this as its ex-dividend date. Be sure to buy any of the above stocks before the market closing of the ex-dividends date previous day to benefit from the dividend payment. A few initial public offerings have been arranged for next week. Accelerate Energy Incorporated with ticker symbol E, will be listed in New York Stock Exchange. There are 16 million shares offered at a price between $21 and $24. Accelerate is changing the way the world accesses cleaner, more affordable and reliable energy by delivering regasified natural gas, benefiting hundreds of millions of people around the world. From their founding, they have focused on providing flexible liquefied natural gas solutions to emerging markets in diverse environments across the globe, providing a lesser emitting form of energy to markets that often rely on coal as their primary energy source. Applied Blockchain Incorporated, with ticker symbol APLD, will be listed in NASDAQ. There are 3.2 million shares offered at a price between $16.54 and $20.54. and Applied Blockchain is a publicly traded builder and operator of next-generation data centers across North America, which provide substantial compute power to blockchain infrastructure and support Bitcoin mining. It seeks to enhance shareholder value through exceptional business practices and operational performance, strong governance, responsible reporting, and effective communication and engagement. Genius Group Limited, 
with ticker symbol GNS, will be listed in New York Stock Exchange American. There are 3.3 million shares offered at a price between $5 and $6. Genius Group's mission is to develop an entrepreneur education system that prepares students for the 21st century. They believe that the current global education system is in need of a more relevant, upgraded, student-centered curriculum that is both high-tech and high-dutch, and believe that such a curriculum can be a force for good too. If you find this video useful, please like it, leave your comment below, share to a friend and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.